I made a post in the Marmoset Toolbag thread on Reddit, and one of the other Marmoset users asked about the lighting setup that I was using to show off the character. And I told them that I would make a series of videos, and I decided to challenge myself by trying to make one minute videos that would show the whole process in under 10 minutes uh, and keeping them to one minute so that they play through a regular Instagram feed. Uh, and I was able to do that. So to set up a lighting scenario like this in under 10 minutes with a full step by step, all you have to do if you're watching on Instagram is swipe left. I'll also probably put these videos on my blog on ArtStation. So if you look me up on ArtStation, it's just point pusher on ArtStation, uh, just like it's spelled right over here and you should be able to set up something like this in under 10 minutes. Good luck. First things first, let's dissect one of these lighting setups. If I go here into daylight and look, I basically got three lights sitting up there. A rim light, a key light, and a fill light. And I can turn off the contribution of each light. So there's the rim, there's the key, and there's the fill, right? The fill light is there to just brighten things up and simulate the kind of bounce light that you get with a more complex lighting setup. The key light is there for a primary source of illumination, in this case, daylight, something like the sun, so sort of a warmer light. Because our sunlight is warmer, our fill light is cooler. And then we've got our rim light, which is really just our theatrical light to sort of help elevate the character up off of the background and make them sort of pop off of the background. So looking at that setup, I'm going to replicate that setup several times to create all of the other lighting scenarios. And each of these lighting scenarios can have the light adjusted for direction and temperature, etc. Okay, let's start to set up our own lighting scenario. I'm going to turn off my daylight. And immediately what you notice is that the HDRI image that I have lighting my scene, if I click the sky node, has been turned all the way down. And the background mode has been changed from blurred sky to just color. And I've chosen a dark neutral gray as my background color. The reason I've done this is because I want to show off the character. And there's a lot of information to look at if you only use the background. Now, I'm using this HDRI because it does contribute to the general lighting of the character and make them feel touchable. But it's got such a general, strong sort of uh, direction without any theatricality associated with it. It doesn't really say anything about the scene or the character. So I'm minimizing its contribution by turning it all the way down to 0.1. So before we even add any lights, we're going to go ahead and do that to minimize the contribution in the scene. Next, I can start adding lights. So I'll make something sort of like that daylight setup again. And I'm going to go up here to Scene, Add Object, Light, or you can hit Control L on the keyboard. And I'm going to use two directional lights. So this is going to be my key light, and I'm going to set the type here to directional. And with a key light, it doesn't matter where it lives in the scene. What matters is the direction that it's rotated in. So if I rotate this light down, it'll cast shadows down raking across the object. And if I go ahead and rotate it around, we can get something that rakes across at a 45 degree. Generally, pretty good to show off the sort of curvature of a, of a model. I'll also play with the width of the light. And you should note that this width attribute will soften the shadows a bit, but it won't show up when you export uh, to ArtStation. So you can play with that to do turntable renders. But if you're going to ArtStation, the shadows will probably be pretty hard at least in this current iteration of Marmoset uh, 3.08. Next, I'm going to add a rim light. And I'm just going to go back up here and hit Scene, Add Object, Light. And I'm going to make this a directional light as well. And I'm just going to rotate it until the lighting is coming around the corner of the character and separating them from the background. Sometimes what I'll do when I'm placing lights, just to be sure of that particular light's contribution, I'll pick a weird color like green and then maybe make it even a little brighter. But now I can see exactly what's happening when I rotate that specific light. And then when I'm happy with the general coverage and how much it's illuminating the surface, I'll go ahead and set the color back to whatever I really want the color to be. In this case, I'll just leave these white for now and also just adjust the brightness. The third and final light I'll add to this scene is our fill light. So I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to Scene, Add Object, Light. And in this case, I'm going to go down and I'm going to make the type Omni. And an Omni, Omni light shines equal in all directions. And I'll do the same thing I did in the last video. 
I'll make this one really red and really bright, and we can see just how much it's contributing to the scene. Now, the importance of this light is I want to keep a simple principle in mind. Generally speaking, when a light is warm, it has cool shadows. When a light is cool, the shadows appear warmer. And what I want to do is balance this light with my key light. So right now my key light is giving off white light, but if I warm that up just a hair and adjust the brightness, the warmer you go, the more saturation you add to the light. Generally speaking, the brighter it can be. And now if I go and grab my fill light, I can go ahead and make that cooler and we'll see that the shadows immediately sort of look a little cooler and it looks a little bit more like daylight. All right, now let's organize our scene a bit. So I'm gonna go ahead and name this key light. So I'll call that key, rim, and fill. And then I'm gonna hold shift and select all three objects. And I'm gonna go up here to scene. I'm gonna say group selection. I'm gonna call this daylight two. Now, the problem here is if I start to rotate around, we are predict predictably gonna catch the edge of that rim light, right? So if I start rotating around here, we're going to see that his back is really illuminated by the rim light. What I want is a situation where the rim light is always acting as a rim light. So if I take this and drag it right under main camera, now when I rotate around, I never catch that rim light. It always lights only the side of the character because the lights are traveling with the camera. This works in just about any package. It works in Maya. I believe it works in Blender. So it's a really, really good trick. Now you can obviously you know, tweak each individual light. But now if I go ahead and grab this and I go up here to uh, scene, duplicate selection, I'm gonna rename this night light two. And inside night light two, I've still got my key light, which is gonna be something like a moonlight. So I'm gonna take that and make it way cooler. And if you ever notice in the movies, again, we're trying to get something that's pretty theatrical. The brightness of moonlight is ridiculous, right? It's usually just a big soft bank of lights that they have off to the side with a blue filter on it, or sometimes they color time the, the film to be uh, slightly bluer later, right? And now uh, that means that my fill light, that same principle, you know, warm and cool, I'm going to take the shadows and I'm just going to warm them up a bit. And they don't have to be that warm. I can make them a little more neutral, and I'll make the light very soft by adjusting the width, right? And I'll continue to repeat, and get different setups. All right, the final thing is when you're all done, you can take your model and select it. And you can go up to Scene, Add Object, Turntable, and it'll create a turntable node for you. And now with that turntable node active, you can go ahead and swap the lights on and off. And you can check how your materials are reacting to different lighting scenarios, which is really the most valuable from an information standpoint uh, reason you might set something like this up, right? But also it looks cool and it shows a potential employer that you're thinking about these things and how your character fits into different scenarios, etc. And you always have the flexibility to tune any of these, you know, so that's pretty much it, right? So it's a very simple, easy idea, way to very simple way to think about it. Last note, if anyone wants to think about sort of the lighting here, I encourage you to look up a really old SIGGRAPH paper by John Carr's called Pixel Cinematography. Uh, so hopefully this makes some sense and see you later.